Welcome back to the second fan favorite episode of Maclay Playground. Today, I'm going to be using silica supported polyphosphoric acid to make diisopropyl ether. Now, diisopropyl ether is more nonpolar than regular diethyl ether, so it can dissolve a larger range of nonpolar substances. It also has a higher boiling point, which is useful for recrystallizations. Now, the purpose of this experiment is to see how strong and how powerful silica supported polyphosphoric acid is for dehydrating things. So, today, I'm going to test it using an alcohol. The materials you need are isopropyl alcohol and silica supported polyphosphoric acid. The first thing we're going to do is add 500 milliliters of 91% isopropyl alcohol. The next thing we're going to do is add this into our polyphosphoric acid. This will help it remain intimate. Now, the amount of polyphosphoric acid I have here is around 200 grams. Now we're going to combine our mixtures. There's a lot left. We'll get it all out though. After adding both solutions, I'm going to stir even more vigorously. The purpose of this is to make it easier for when I put it in the boiling flask. The next thing we're going to do is put in our solution. Make sure all the stuff behind also gets in there. After adding our polyphosphoric acid and our alcohol, I'm going to cap it and swirl it around a bit just to make sure everything is inside and in solution. What I noticed during the addition is that the flask got rather warm, and that's because the alcohol is already starting to condense into ether because of the polyphosphoric acid. After we got all our contents inside the solution, the only thing left to do is grease up our parts and start the distillation. After setting up my distillation system, it is important to enter a temperature that facilitates ether synthesis. So, I'm going to turn it up to 170 degrees. As our temperature rises to 170 C, all we can do now is wait for it to start boiling. Our reaction is now going full speed. I had to turn it up to 180 C because at 170 it wasn't going as vigorously. You can even see a couple of the bumps that come out because of the high heat. To increase our ether condensation, I'm going to put in some ice. I'm also going to put in an ice pack. That way the condenser water will be nice and cool for the ether. After about five hours on high heat, no more distillate was coming over, so I cooled it down. With the distillate that we have though, I'm going to test to see if it is alcohol or ether. To test out if our distillate is ether or alcohol, we're going to pour it in a solution of water. If it is miscible, which means they both blend together, it is alcohol. If they form two separate mixtures, then it is ether. As you can clearly tell, we have one solution. That means we produced alcohol and not ether. So, it turns out silica-supported polyphosphoric acid is not the best catalyst for making ethers. I think it's because that uh, isopropyl alcohol is a very bulky alcohol, and it's harder to dehydrate it. Also, making ethers in general requires high heats, and I think sulfuric acid is better suited for it. Does this mean silica-supported polyphosphoric acid is a bad catalyst? Well, no. We still haven't tested it with fish esterifications, aldol condensations, or cyclizations. However, we do know that sulfuric acid is still king for making ether. In the future, I will be making diisopropyl ether with sulfuric acid. In the meantime, I hope you liked this video, and don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.